Welcome to Worship at Union Baptist Church. We are truly blessed to have you join us today. If you are visiting in person, temperatures are taken when you enter the building. If your temperature is above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you may not enter. 
Masks that cover your nose and mouth are optional. This is your final and very last chance to pick up your choir robes before they are donated this Saturday. If you have a choir robe at Union, you may take it home after worship today. Robes are stored in the annex. Leave your preferred date and time at 914-948-6439, extension 209. There are six ways to give at Union. You may mail your envelope to the church, give online at www.unionbaptistwp.org, download the Ministry One app, text the word GIVE to 914-415-6439, scan the QR code on the back of your bulletin or on the screen, or ask for an offering envelope as you enter the sanctuary. This is your day, Union students. Are you a member of Union Baptist Church in White Plains, New York? Are you a current college student? If yes is your answer, then Union Cares wants to hear from you. Visit Union's website and click on the Cares slider. If you want to receive your gift from the Union Cares ministry, you must register no later than 5 p.m. today. Many of us are uneasy about inviting someone to worship. We've got just what you need. Invitation to worship cards are available at the welcome table in the Narthex. Parents, add this event to your calendar. Union is hosting a scavenger hunt and Easter basket giveaway for youngsters. Who, all boys and girls ages three to 12, invite your friends and neighbors. What? Join us for children's fun, games, exciting activities, and free giveaways. When? This Saturday, March 30th at 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. Where? On the UBC front lawn and in the parking lot. Admit it, Union, raising kids can be hard. The Central Westchester Family Opportunity Center and Union Baptist Church are here to support you. UBC offers on-site appointments at no cost to you. Call 914-523-9008. The Family Opportunity Center is also looking for a part-time clinician. This is a paid position. If you are interested, call Reverend Swinton at 914-948-6439. Extension 207. Information is also on the welcome table in the North X. It's easy to receive e-blasts. Scroll to the bottom of Union's homepage, enter your name, and subscribe. Set sail with pastor and people. Join us as we celebrate 30 years together. There are just 70 days and counting until Sunday, June 2nd. It's easy to reserve your place on board. Go to Union's website and use the slider at the top of the home page to register for this all-white affair. Happy sailing! Can't get to the website? Then stop at the table in the North X today and reserve your space. Embracing the Teardrops is a pre-planning workshop addressing arrangements for the loss of a loved one. This workshop will help us plan for and deal with the process of death. All adults are invited to attend this informative workshop on Saturday, April 6th from 10 a.m. until noon. Meet us in the UBC Worship Center Sanctuary. Register online today. You are invited to worship with Union this Friday, March 29th at 7 p.m. Follow Jesus from his arrest to his crucifixion. Hear his seven last words. Join us in person or online. Remember to keep up with Union by watching YouTube, subscribing to eBlasts, and listening to announcements. Today's worship service and events may be photographed, recorded, or aired live. If you enter the building and stay, you agree to have your image shown during a live broadcast. Details are posted as you enter the building. 
Know her story. Simone Biles, Olympian, born 1997. Continue to pray for Union's ministry, members, ministers, and pastor. God bless you. so good to be here on this Palm Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. Was not a guarantee, but his mercy. Didn't have to wake up this morning, but his mercy. He didn't have to do it, but his mercy. Woo! Made a way out of no way. It was only his Hallelujah. Healed my broken spirit by his. Woo! Saved my sin sick soul by his. Oh, glory to God. I know somebody knows about the mercies of God this morning. Can you put your hands together all over the building and give God some thanks for his mercy? Hallelujah. Thank you our call to worship this morning. Hallelujah. Psalm 99, verses 1 through 3 from the Christian Standard Bible. Hallelujah. The Lord reigns. Let the peoples tremble. He is enthroned between the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted above all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awe-inspiring name. He is holy. Hallelujah. Let us look to the holy God. Glory to your name. Hosanna. 
Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Lord. Eternal God, our Father, we come before your presence with gratitude, Lord God, in our hearts. Praise upon our lips, thanking you once again for doing for us what we could not do for your, ourselves. You allowed your mercy to roll on a little while longer that we might wake up this morning, press our way out into this place called Union, that we might together lift our voices in unison and give praise to you, an awesome and a great God. Father, you have met us here. So we're believing you for your Holy Spirit to take charge and lead us as we worship you together today in spirit and in truth. Bless Father God, Brother Charles Mack, Lord God, as he leads us, Lord God, in praise and worship. Bless the man servant, our pastor, who will break, hallelujah, the bread of life that will be food for our weary souls. Bless every servant, Father God, that is ministering today, those on the door, those in the narthex, and these wonderful musicians, Father God. Thank you for the behind-the-scenes tech team, Lord God. Thank you for the administrators, Father God, who make sure everything is in place. But we thank you most of all for the Holy Spirit, because if it were not for you, nothing would be possible. So we concede to your Holy Spirit having full control. And we will bless your name. And we will lift our voices in praise. And we will clap our hands. And we will dance and shout, Hosanna, because you reign forever and ever and evermore. Thank you for being so good. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let's bless the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Our congregational hymn this morning is, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Amen. Do we have a friend in Jesus this morning? Do you have a friend in Jesus this morning? Hallelujah. I'm so glad that I do this morning.
musicians praise him. Come on, y'all. Let the musicians play, yeah. ago that we had that lifeline this morning we can take it to the Lord in prayer thank you Jesus that we can take it to you in prayer come on y'all it's so good to be in the house of God this morning amen 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 amen
Anybody want to be closer to the King of Kings this morning? Anybody need to touch the hem of his garment this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So from your spirit, from your most inner being, say, give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks for he has given. Jesus Christ, his son, give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One, give thanks for he has given Jesus Christ, his son, and of what the Lord has done for us and now say and now let we say I am strong let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us Lift your hands and sing now and now. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done. Come on, church, for us right now. Thank you, Lord. Everybody say, give thanks. Give thanks. Are you thankful this morning? Give thanks. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Give thanks. Give thanks. Oh, we give you thanks. God, we give you thanks. Give thanks. We thank you, Lord. Give thanks. Give thanks. The song says, give thanks for what the Lord has done for you. Has he done anything for you? Has she shown up for you this week alone? Have you seen his hand in your life? He appeared to Moses as a burning bush, amen? Have you seen his hand in your life this morning? I can tell you for me, he's shown up in his people, amen? God has shown up for me through his people. I'm so thankful for God that he's shown up with the sunrise this morning. He showed his glory this morning with the breath that I breathe this morning. He's shown up that I can feel his presence when I'm feeling down. He lifts me up. Amen. He's shown up when I was doubtful that he proved himself faithful to me. Amen. He's shown up that when I was filled with sorrow and grief that he healed my heart. Hallelujah. He showed up when I was fearful and I didn't know what was going to happen. That he said to you, son, don't worry, I got it under control. Don't worry, son, don't worry, son. Last week, I believe it was, was either Deacon, Reverend, uh, Deacon Dolman or, or Elder Manning who said, don't pray and worry, amen? And I'm learning that this morning, not to pray and worry because God is not a man that he should lie. 
He always keeps his promises, brothers and sisters. He always showed up. We used to say he doesn't come when, when we want him, right? But he's what? He's always, he's always on time and on his time, not our time, because we're impatient, we're ungrateful. <laughs> we, get, we get real caught up in what we think should happen, but they used to say that God knows best, amen? So I ask you this morning one more time, have you seen him? Have you seen him? Just think for one second. When you were driving in the car this morning, guess what? You didn't get into an accident. I saw him, because I'm standing here right now, amen? When I was running late because I couldn't find my keys, that was him, because he was preventing something, because he was putting me on his time, amen? So I give thanks for the little things, because with God, there is no waste, amen? There's no waste with God the little things. He's in the little things. Amen. So I give thanks for the little things. I thank God for the big things. Amen. But I'm learning to thank God for the little things. Amen. So I give thanks. Can you let that be your testimony this morning, y'all? Come on, saints. Give thanks. Give thanks. If you're thankful this morning, once you lift your hands and say give thanks, give thanks. We lift our hands to you, God, in holy adoration, Lord. Give thanks, because we serve a holy, holy God. Oh, give thanks. If the president walked in, we would stand up to our feet. But God is in the building, so I can give him thanks. Oh, I lift my voice to you, God. I'll give thanks. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, God. Give thanks. You're worthy, God. Give thanks. And now, come on, and now. And now, let the weak, that's us, we're the weak ones, we're the weak ones, we're strong in him, let the poor say I am so rich because of what the Lord has done. You don't have to cry no more, because joy comes in the morning and now, let the weak, let the weak say I am let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. From your mouth say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just tell him thank you right now. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because I forgot to thank you, Lord, for that little thing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm grateful this morning, faithful God. Give thanks, faithful Lord, faithful God, faithful God. Give thanks, thank you, God. Thank you, God, we give thanks. Give thanks, oh Lord, oh, oh, oh. give thanks. Give thanks that you care about me, Lord, oh. Give thanks that you left the 99 and you came for me, God. Give thanks. Oh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Give thanks. Why don't you worship it right now? Put your hands together right now for our King. As we shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna for the King of Kings. God bless you. God bless you this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. My name is Aurora Johnson, and I will be reading the Old and New Testament scriptures. The Old Testament reading comes from Psalms 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me 
all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The New Testament scripture comes from Luke chapter 19, verse 29 through 40. And it came to pass when he drew near to Bethphage, Bethphage and Bethany at the mountain called Olivet, that he sent two of his disciples saying, go into the village opposite you, where as you enter, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you loosing it? Thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went their way and found it, just as he had said to them. But as they were loosing the colt, the owners of it said to them, why are you loosing the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of him. Then they brought him to Jesus, and they threw their own clothes on the colt, and they set, they set Jesus on him. And as they went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then, as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mountain of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. The word of God for the people of God. And all the people said, Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Palm Sunday. I am I'm thrilled to see our young people once again given leadership in the worship experience. Amen. Uh, we have a, a new young man who is serving with the greeters this morning. Um, where, where are you? Where is he? Come, come, come down front. Come, come on, come on. I want everybody to see you. Come down here. Amen. Come on. Come on, straighten up. Come on. Come on. Just come on down. Come on. Just turn around so people can applaud you. <laughs> Amen. That's Deshaun. He was born here. Amen. And we thank God for all of the young people who are serving this morning. I see you up there. Uh, last, I think it was last week at the Greenberg Library, uh, they were honoring uh, the NAACP and a few other organizations were honoring uh, two young women from our church, uh, Lori Stevens, who is Good for Girls, and Sister Tiffany Hamilton, who is the CEO of the White Plains w YWCA. And during the program, one of our young people, Olivia, is Olivia, where are you? Is Olivia, there she is, she's ushering this greeting this morning. She stood up at the mic in front of a crowd and she read her part. And I'm telling you, my, I, the buttons on my shirt was just popping off as she read, made eye contact, Red made eye contact, stood there with poise and dignity, and I'm, I'm, I'm you made me proud, baby girl. <laughs> Amen. And so we thank God for the for the good for girls, for the mentors, for the ministry here where young people are groomed, Amen, and taught about their faith. That is critical, especially in these days. And so if you have young people you need to understand that they need to be involved in the life of a church. Many of us were groomed at church. Amen. We learned how to stand in front of people and speak at church. When we were young, doing poems, amen, on Easter Sunday. And so that's a, a critical part of their uh, development, spiritual development. So I want to encourage all of you parents 
who have young people, get them involved in the life of the church. And if I had my way, they would be involved in the life of the Union Church family. Amen. And so we thank God. Thank God for that. Uh, there is, we are planning a workshop, a critical workshop on April 6th here at the church between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. Learn how to best manage the end of life preparations workshop. This is a workshop that is helping the families of our congregation to prepare for the inevitable. It's appointed for man once to die and after that the judgment. And so we can push it out of our minds. That does not mean that it's not going to happen. And so I think it's best for us and the church, our Christian education department is providing an opportunity to bring a specialist to us to help us to understand the process in preparing for the death of a loved one. It's critical. So often we are unprepared, even when our loved one is sick and in the hospital and it looks like the end of life is near, we still choose to ignore the fact that we have to plan for their, for, for their, for their death. We need to do it in advance. It's critical that we do it in advance. And your church is offering an opportunity, a workshop where a specialist will come in and help us to understand, to think through the process, what we need to do, what we need to prepare for, so that when that time comes, we won't be caught unprepared. The worst thing we can do is be caught unprepared. Amen. Amen. And so please take advantage of this workshop. It's planned for April 6th. I believe that's a Saturday from 10 to 12 here at the church. Embracing Teardrops. You can go online and there is a flyer online with the, um, with the information that you need. Is there registration? We're not registering. Just come. Just bring your friends and your neighbors and just come for this very important workshop. Amen. Today begins Holy Week. Today is Palm Sunday, and we move through this week in prayer and fasting, preparing for Good Friday. Good Friday, that day when Christ was crucified on the cross, we will have our Good Friday service here this coming Friday, beginning at 7 o'clock. Our ministers are prepared with a presentation of the chronological events that happened on that day. We want to encourage you to be present. I know that our musicians will be present. This will be streamed online. So we look forward to seeing you this coming Friday. The worship service begins at 7 p.m. Resurrection Sunday is next Sunday. Please continue to pray for our church's spiritual revival and renewal. And all the people said amen. Sweet hour. Pastor. Good morning, everyone, once again. We'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge our guests, our first-time visitors. If you are a first-time visitor here at Union Baptist Church, will you please raise your hand and one of these wonderful hospitality members in the aisles will give you a packet and we would just like to take the opportunity as the members of Union Baptist Church to greet you. So if there are any visitors this morning, please let us know. all home today praise god god bless you songwriter said sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my father's throne makes all my wants and wishes known how many of you know that prayer changes things? Hallelujah. As we prepare our hearts and our minds for prayer this morning, of course, we do have some special prayer requests that we'd like to lift before your hearing, but I'd also like to just take an opportunity to share one thank you note. Amen? Is that all right, Union? To Pastor Williams and my UBC family, Words cannot convey 
the fullness of my gratitude for the honor bestowed upon me during Officer's Installation Day. I wanted to express my deep appreciation to Pastor Williams and my UBC family for this honor. The plaque, cards, love offerings are so very much appreciated. I have been truly blessed. I would also like to extend a special thank you to the Union Cares for providing the delicious refreshments, Dr. Gavan for the pictures, and even to Sister Melva Lloyd for editing and processing the video. My family and I are blessed to be a part of the Union Baptist Church family. Again, thank you. May God's blessings continue to be with you all. Trustee Fred Campbell. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And we thank God for that honor yesterday. We wanna continue in prayer today for Trustee Mary Dupree and family, Mr. Jim Harris, who lost their brother this month. The homegoing celebration for Mr. Robert Harris will be Saturday, April 6th, at the Chapel of the Chimes in Oakland, California. Please keep that family in your prayers. Brother Charles Mack is requesting special prayer for his wife and family today. Please lift them in your thoughts and prayers. Brother Anthony Montague would like prayers for his uncle, Pastor David Jenkins. Deacon and Deaconess Parker are asking us to pray for their family, their family member and sister-in-law. Please keep Sister Christina McCoy and nephew Stephen McCoy Jr. and niece Sir, Lee, Sir, Sir I Pierce in your thoughts and prayers, amen? And we will continue in prayer for the family of Sister Dorothy Abel, for our sister Londi Gavan, for Sister Annette Grayman, for Trustee Keith Roy James, for Sister Mona Reardon, for Sister Jennifer King Wilcox and family, and for Brother Larry Young and family, amen? Mail cards to the family in care of the Union Baptist Church, 31 Manhattan Avenue, White Plains, New York, 10607, and requests for prayers and bereavement notices may be left at 914-948-6439, extensions 207, 203, and 201. Your calls will be returned as soon as possible. May we stand, if you can, all over the building as we blend our hearts together in prayer. Abba Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy name alone is great and greatly to be praised. We thank you, Father God, and we ask, Lord God, that the mercies of your kingdom, Lord God, will rain down upon us today because we know, Lord God, that your mercies are plentiful and you are faithful to honor those who love you. Father God, we are here in this sanctuary on this Lord's day as well as we are online with our eyes lifted to the hills because we acknowledge you as our only source of help, Father God. And in this season of our lives, we need you, Father God. We're praying even now, Father God, for spiritual renewal in this church, Father God, as we enter into this sacred, solemn, holy week, Lord God. Renew us in our spirit, man, Father God, that we might truly be the men and women of God, that we might tell a dying world that you live, Father God, because you live within our soul. Bless us, Father God, that we may be a blessing, Father God, to those that are in need. Help us to extend our hands, Father God, as an extension of your love, Father God, that we might, Lord God, be the church that you are calling for in these last and evil days, Father God. A church, Father God, that cares. A church, Father God, that will put their hands together and work together, Father God, to fulfill the needs of those, Father God, 
God, who find themselves disenfranchised by life circumstances. Oh, Father God, we pray that you will continue to touch each and every heart in this place today, Lord God, that we will be generous in our giving, Lord God, that there will be resources available, Lord God, to feed the hungry, Lord God, to clothe the naked, Father God, to provide resources for those that find themselves in challenge and struggling with life circumstances, Father God. Father God, whatever the need, Lord God, training and equipping our children, Father God, preparing workshops, Father God, for those who need to learn how, Lord God, to prepare for the inevitable, Lord God, which is death. Whatever we need to do, Father God, we pray that you would touch us, Lord God. Use us, Lord God. Allow us to be light and salt, Lord God, in a dying world, Father God. Help us, Lord God, to be your representatives everywhere we go, Lord God. Allow your love to flow through us, Lord God. Minister to the needs of the people, Lord God, by the hands of your handmaids and your handmaidens, Lord God. Do it in us, Lord God. Father God, we thank you for this place called Union. We came in here today, Lord God, to give your name the praise. It is Palm Sunday, and we cry out in our spirit, Hosanna, because we thank you that Jesus came and gave his life as a ransom for our soul's salvation. Father God, help us, Lord God, to lift up holy hands in this place, Lord God, without wrath or doubt, Lord God, and give thanks and praise to you, Father God, for you are our rock in a weary land. You are our shelter in the time of storm. You are our help, Lord God, in every situation and circumstance, Father God. And we thank you in advance, Lord God, for what you have already done. God. Bless those that are sick among us, Lord God. Somebody doesn't feel so well, Lord God. And we pray, Father God, that you roll out the hem of your garment. One more time, Lord God. Touch those, Lord God, who stand in need of a healing today, Lord God, that they might be restored, Lord God. You said, let the weak say I am strong. Let us, Lord God, say we are well, Lord God, because of the stripes of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord God. He did it for us, Lord God. Let us do it for one another. Oh, Lord God, thank you. Hallelujah, Lord God. Father God, comfort. There are names lifted today, Lord God. There are family members that are in need of comfort, Lord God. Strengthen the hearts, Lord God, of those who are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Remind them, Lord God, that they are not alone but that you are with them, Lord God, and you promise to never leave them, Lord God, nor will you ever forsake those that are your own. We thank you this morning, oh God. Father God, somebody needs a job. And you, Lord God, and open the windows of heaven and make a way, Lord God, out of no way, Lord God. Father God, thank you for all of the ways that you made all of the healings, Lord God, that have been manifested in our lives. All of the times that you comforted us, Lord God. All of the times that you lifted up our bowed down heads, Lord God. All of the times that you opened doors and no man could close and closed doors that no man could open. All of the times that you did for us, Lord God, what we could not do for ourselves. Sometimes we didn't say thank you, Lord God, but today we say thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done and all that you continue to be. You are God and you are God alone. Father God, in this season, Lord God, somebody, Lord God, does not have a loved one. Help us, Lord God, to visit those, Lord God, who are in hospitals, who are in nursing homes, who are in extended care facilities, who are in their homes, Lord God, not able, Lord God, to get out. Send us, Lord God. We're not sending you, Lord God, because you placed in us the ability, Lord God, to go in your name. So we're going, Lord God. And we know that as you we go, you will accompany us, Lord God, and give us everything that we stand in need of, that we might be a blessing, Lord God to some lost soul, to some grieving soul, to some sick soul, whatever the need, Lord God. Use us, 
as your hands, Lord God, to minister to that need, Lord God. Thank you in advance, Lord God. We pray for our nation. Have mercy, Lord God, all over this land. Leaders, Lord God, who are in trouble, Lord God. They have troubled spirits, Lord God. They are selfish, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, and rebuke that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Lord God, that a spirit of compassion, Lord God, will grip their hearts, Lord God, that they will open opportunities, Lord God, for our seniors, Lord God, for our children, Lord God, for homeless households, Lord God, for our disenfranchised, Lord God, for the immigrants, Lord God, whatever the need, Lord God, we pray. Lord God that you will quicken by your spirit and Lord God make it so because you said we have not because we ask not so we're asking in faith we're praying Father God for Israel right now we heard the news this week Lord God that ISIS came in Lord God and once again Lord God took lives we're praying against that spirit Father God of violence domestic and international. Have mercy upon them, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you stun their minds, Father God, that they will want to do evil, Father God, but you will touch their minds so greatly, Lord God, that they will turn around and do good and won't even know why. Because you've done it for us, Lord God. We know that you are no shorter than your promises. Father God, move as never before throughout this nation, throughout this world. Make us, Lord God, to know that you are God. And beside you, there is none other. Father God, we sense your presence. Breathe on this place. Bless the man servant, Father God, who shall break this bread today, Lord God. We thank you for Pastor Williams, Lord God. Touch him, Lord God, from the crown of his head, hallelujah, to the sole of his feet, Lord God. Give him a word, Father God, that is in season, Lord God, a rhema word, Lord God, that will be good for our weary souls, Lord God, that will run from this place, Lord God, with a new testimony, Lord God, with a greater determination, Lord God, to tell somebody that you live. Hallelujah, Lord God, bless his lovely wife, Dorothy. His daughter, Candace, Lord God, prosper everything that they put their hands to, Lord God, and help us to push the vision because that's what you called us, vision pushers. You've given him the vision, Lord God, and let us stand behind him and push to see your will done in this church, in this Greenberg, White Plains, Ellums Ford, Ardsley, Scarsdale, Hartsdale, community, Father God. Just do it, Father God, as only you can. And for that, we'll be careful to give your name the praise, for you are worthy. Give your name the honor, because you are set apart. Give your name the glory, because you are only due glory. It is in Jesus' name that we ask this blessing in the people of God. Can you join me by lifting up your voices right now? Hallelujah! Glory! He's good! Amen. We thank Reverend Dorsey for her fervent prayer. Amen. Amen. Prayer does change things. And prayer changes people. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare now to worship God with our, our tithes and offerings. Um, usher, uh, trustees, would you please stand with me uh, this morning for prayer? Let me encourage the, um, the believers of Union Baptist Church to continue to be faithful in your giving. Amen. Amen. Continue to be faithful in your giving. Um, God will take care of you. Yes. We, are, we are witnesses of that. Let us pray. God, our Father, we do thank you always for the blessings that you've poured out upon our lives. We are blessed indeed. We thank you for the physical strength that permits us to get up every day. Thank you for the, the income streams that you've allowed us to, to have in our lives. We thank you for our businesses, for our jobs. We thank you for the skill set that you have given to us for, 
for the creativity that you've given us that allow us to make a living. Thank you, Father, for every good and perfect gift comes from you. We come in obedience to your word to bring that which belongs to you. As we come, God, we always ask that you would examine our hearts, examine our motive for giving. If there's anything displeasing to you, we ask that you would move it so the money that we bring and our attitude about giving will be pleasing and acceptable in your life and in your eyes. We thank you, Father, for every gift. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people said, amen. Amen. Would you, if you have an envelope, just, just lift it. If you have something to give, a trustee will take it from you right now. If you're online, you can scan the QR code or choose one of the ways to give. We thank you, online givers, for your financial support of the church. Thank you to the members of the Union Church family who aren't able to make it to the building, and yet you support with your finances and with your presence online each week. Thank you so much. We look forward to another time when you can come into the sanctuary and share with us in person. worthy to be praised. salvation oh shout hallelujah for he is worthy to be praised oh, oh, oh shout hallelujah for he is worthy to be praised oh, 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 Zanna, oh blessed be the rock Blessed be the rock of my salvation, Hosanna, oh, blessed be the rock, hallelujah, blessed be the rock of my salvation, oh, magnify the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Oh, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. For he is worthy to be For he is worthy to be praised. Oh, shout hallelujah. Oh, shout hallelujah. For he is worthy to be praised. For he is worthy. Oh, Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of our Hosanna, blessed be the rock of our salvation. And I'm standing before you once again because we need to acknowledge our pastor. He is celebrating a birthday. I believe it's on the 26th of this month. And we want to stand all over the building and thank God for our pastor and wish him a happy 
birthday. Hallelujah. Give honor again to whom honor is due. And we thank God for the man servant that has been serving here for 30 years. We love you, Pastor. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Now, will all the, the March birthdays, would you please stand? March birthdays, all these VIPs. Amen. We acknowledge your birthdays as well. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we do thank you for the gifts and we thank you for the givers. We ask your blessings, Father, upon them both. We pray now that as we turn our attention to your word, that you would give us receptive hearts and active minds to receive what you have to share through the lips of this preacher this morning. All praise and glory belong to you already. In Jesus' name we ask it, amen. amen. Would you please stand with me and turn in your Bible to the gospel according to Mark chapter 11, and we're going to begin with verse 1, the gospel according to Mark chapter 11, and we're going to begin with verse 1. Of course, this is a familiar passage of scripture that we find here. I'm reading from the New King James Bible, the New King James Version. This is what it says. Now, when they drew near Jerusalem and Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village opposite you. And as soon as you have entered it, you will find a coat tied on which no one has sat. Loose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say the Lord has need of it and immediately he will send it here. So they went their way and found the coat tied by the door outside on the street and they loosed it. But some of those who stood there said to them, what are you doing loosing the coat? And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded. So they let them go. Then they brought the coat to Jesus and threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out saying hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord blessed is the kingdom of our father david that comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest and jesus went into jerusalem and into the temple so when he had looked around at all things as the hour was already late he went out to bethany with the twelve this is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Would you please be seated? This is Palm Sunday, and of course, the passage that we have read is recorded in all four of the gospel narratives. This passage records the triumphant entry of the Lord Jesus into the city of Jerusalem. And of course, we know by him so doing, Jesus fulfills the ancient prophecy that is found in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, that says this about Messiah. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout out, daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a coat, the foal of an ass. My brothers and sisters, when we read this narrative in any of the gospel records, the primary emphasis of this significant event that we see in the text is that Jesus is revealed to Israel as the long-awaited Messiah. He's revealed to them as their king. Jesus alone in scripture fits the description of the anointed one and on this day, this Palm Sunday, this first Palm Sunday, Jesus is fulfilling the prophecy. The common individual, the common man in the text, rejoiced at the appearance of the Lord Jesus as he rode into Jerusalem on a coat, the foal of a donkey. 
thousands of worshipers, Jewish worshipers, crowded the city of Jerusalem celebrating the Passover. Many people who had never seen Jesus before but heard reports of his ministry and miracles were in the crowd that day. And they were all caught up in the excitement of the moment and joined in the celebration. We focus in this morning on verses 8 through 10, where this is where it's recorded. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We recognize Palm Sunday as a day of praise. And I want to say something about the perspective of praise of the people in the crowd on that day. Palm Sunday is indeed, is in fact, a day of praise, recognizing Jesus as Messiah. Palm Sunday celebrates the inevitability of God's plan. Praise on this day was divine necessity. It was not a human choice, but it was divine necessity. All creation is subject to praise him. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaim the works of his hands. Rustling leaves and babbling brooks and gentle breezes join in harmonious praises to the living God. The songwriter says summer and winter, springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their corsets above join with all nature in their manifold witness to God's great faithfulness, mercy, and love. God is great and greatly to be praised. The religious leaders who witnessed the adulations given to Jesus by the crowd demanded that Jesus and his disciples, demanded that Jesus rebuke his disciples for behaving that way. But Jesus explained that such praise was to be expected, that it is appropriate, and that it is necessary. And that if the people didn't do it, the rocks would cry out. Jesus will be praised. Notice, if you will, that in the Gospels according to Mark and Matthew, there is a verse that describes the crowd that we don't find in the Gospels according to Luke and John. Matthew and Mark point out that in the crowd, some went before Jesus, and there were those who followed Jesus as he entered into the city. I want you to underline that. I want you to notice that, that some went before Jesus, and some followed Jesus as he went into the city. I want to suggest that those who went before Jesus into the city that day praised him for what they expected of him. They went before him. They were praising him in anticipation of what he would do. Pay close attention now. They had expectations of him. In other words, they praised him because they expected him to act according to their expectation. Listen to their praise. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. A careful reading of their words helped us to understand what they expected of Jesus, how they expected Jesus to fulfill the promise of God. They knew that Messiah would reestablish the kingdom of David, and they expected, they anticipated Jesus would take Rome by force. That was their expectation. They were praising God for what they thought he would do. They were praising God for what they had established in their own imagination as to how he would act. They praised him. They, they wanted liberation from political oppression. They praised him because they wanted economic justice. They praised him because they anticipated the literal reign of Messiah over the Roman Empire. They had some ways that they wanted Jesus to act. They had created in their own imaginations how God would fulfill his promise. 
And so when Messiah rode into the city on the back of a donkey, those who went before him shouted Hosanna on Sunday, anticipating a military takeover. And when God did not live up to their expectation, the same people who shouted Hosanna on Palm Sunday were the same ones who, crowded, who shouted crucify him on Good Friday. There are times, my brothers and sisters, when we see the same attitude among people today. When God does not respond to our prayer request the way we think he should, or when God doesn't meet our expectations, then there's a tendency to lose faith. But we need to understand that God's plan for your life and mine is a perfect plan. I would caution believers to think that they know God so well and that they know scripture so thoroughly that they think they know what God is going to do and how God is going to do it. Nobody knows God that well. Amen. Our expectation is to yield to divine providence. We need to learn how to let God have his way. So if it turns out the way we imagined it would or not, it does not mean that we lose our trust in God. Some people get caught up in praise today because they imagine how God will fulfill his promise. And we have to be cautioned about preachers who are always telling you what God is going to do. Because when it doesn't happen the way they say it, then there's a chance of you being discouraged because God didn't act the way you thought he would. Some people get angry with God. We are in no position to dictate the terms of our relationship with God. We are in no position to determine our relationship with God. Rather than trying to tell God what to do, we need to understand that he is the potter and we are the clay. God is the creator, and we are his creation. Rather than imposing our will and way on God and demanding that God work according to our time schedule, you and I just need to learn how to trust in God. We don't know when. We don't know how God is going to work in our lives. We don't know. We can't dictate. God knows the beginning and the end. And while we don't know how God would work, we can be confident of this one thing, that God will keep his word. Have I got a witness in the house this morning? <laughs> Human beings are not qualified to make demands on God. We don't know enough to tell God how to fulfill his promises. We just need to trust God. His ways are higher than our ways. His wisdom surpasses ours. He is Alpha and Omega. He knows the end of a situation even for, before it begins. If he says he will bless you, just know that he will bless you. In his time and in his way. If he says, I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out such blessings that you will not have room enough to receive it, don't try to dictate to God how to bless or when to pour out his blessing. You just get ready for the overflow. We are reminded from this text, this perspective of praise, those who went before Jesus. We're reminded that even when things seem uncertain, we can find comfort in the knowledge that God is in control that no matter what the future holds, we can trust God's unfailing love. Those who went before Jesus into the city got ahead of God. Don't get ahead of God. Let God allow his will in our life to unfold. Y'all getting this? They got ahead of God. Their praises turned to curses on Good Friday. 
because God didn't do for them what they thought God should do. They asked for a financial blessing. And they didn't get it the way God, with the way they imagined. They wanted to hit that billion dollar lottery. And God sent them a care package. and their need was met. You and I don't get to dictate to God how to bless us. His blessing is already prepared. And what you and I need to do is live into it. It's already ready. You don't even have to ask for it. Just live into it. They praise God for what they thought he should do, for how they thought he should act. They read the scripture. They understood Messiah. They understood that he would be taken over, and they, in their own imagination, determined how that was going to take place. Y'all need to hear me this morning. And when it didn't happen the way they thought it should happen, then they began to doubt God. As a matter of fact, they shouted, crucify him. We don't want anything else to do with him. They went ahead of God. But then in the text, there were some who followed. Some went before him. Others followed. These are the ones who had, a, had experienced the transforming power of God in their lives. These are the ones who had already experienced Jesus. He had, he had touched their lives. The 12 whom Jesus called followed Jesus into the city. And they were praising God for what he had already done in their lives. And there were a number of individuals in the crowd that followed Jesus. And the crowd that followed Jesus was Lazarus and his sisters Mary and Martha. They followed Jesus. Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, who had been blind and Jesus healed him, he followed Jesus. The woman whom Jesus met at Jacob's well, whose life had been transformed right there, she followed Jesus. Peter's mother-in-law, whom Jesus healed of a a fever, she followed. Zacchaeus, that rich tax collector whose life had been transformed, he followed Jesus. The centurion and his servant whom Jesus healed were in the crowd behind. The Syrophoenician woman and her daughter gave all praises to Jesus for what he had done for them. Most of us here today, we're in that crowd. We're in that crowd that follow Jesus. We give him praises for what he has already done in our lives. Have I got a witness here this morning? We thank him because if it would not have been for him, we wouldn't be here this morning. He saved our souls, healed our brokenness. He gave us our lives direction, meaning, and purpose. He opened our spiritual lives. He energized our creativity. He opened doors of opportunities for us. He has redeemed us with his blood. He restored our positions as sons and daughters of God. He has reconciled us to the Father and washed away our sins. I don't know about you, but I thank God for what he has already done for me. He picked us up when we were down. He turned our troubled lives around. He gave us hope and set us free. Our lives have not been the same since we met Jesus. Haven't been the same. Somebody said, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. I believe everybody in the room has that testimony. 
because we have all got some unique situations in our lives. We've all come through some things in our lives and we've called on the name of Jesus and he has done for us what we could not do for ourselves. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm so glad that I met him when I did. And so I can stand here, I can give the mic to everybody in the room and you all have a unique testimony saying you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. You weren't there when he blessed me. You weren't there when he picked me up. You weren't there when he opened doors of opportunity. He has blessed me and I praise him for his blessings. Amen. Those who went before anticipated what God would do. They misinterpreted scripture. They misinterpreted God's movement. And when God didn't do it like they thought God should do it, they yelled Hosanna on Sunday when they thought he would do it. But when it didn't turn out like they wanted it to, they yelled crucify him on Friday. But those who followed, praise God for what he had already done in their lives. And this last point, the crowd praised Jesus not only for what he would do, but for what he had already done. But finally, in the text, I want you to see that Jesus was right there in their midst. He was in the middle of the crowd. He was between those who went before, and he was before those who followed. Some went before, others followed, but Jesus was with them in the present. We praise God for what he will do. That's why our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. We praise God for what he will do. There's a place that God has prepared for those who love him. John chap, 1 John chapter 3 says, Beloved, now we are the sons and daughters of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. That's what God will do. We praise God for what he will do. We praise God for what he has done. Amen. We praise God that he woke us up this morning. That's past tense. We praise God that he brought us on our way. We thank God and praise God for putting food on our table. That's what he has done. Amen. We thank God for protecting us from evil seen and unseen. That's what he has done. But I want you to know that he's blessing us right now. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is mystery. And all we have is right now. And so, my brothers and sisters, we praise God for what he's doing right now. Come on, praise God for what he's, for what he's doing right now. Because just as Jesus was in the midst of the crowd that day, so Jesus is with us in the present right now what is he doing preacher he's in the presence and i praise him because he's hearing my prayers right now i thank him because he's with me in this moment right now we praise him because he's meeting our needs right now he's given us strength and hope and endurance right now he's encouraging my spirit right now he's giving me hope Right now, there's a hymn that says, the Lord is blessing me. Right now, oh, right now. Y'all know that hymn? He woke me up this morning and started me on my way. Hey, the Lord is blessing me right now right now he's sustaining my life right now he's flooding my soul with his love right now 
He's giving me plans for my future right now. He's giving me a heart of thanksgiving right now. He's a right now God. Hey, I don't have to wait to praise him. I can praise him right now. You ought to go ahead and praise him right now. It's Palm Sunday, and we're still here right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Oh, don't act like it's not a big deal. You better get yourself together. Stop acting all extra. Because if God withdrew his presence from you right now, you wouldn't make it out of the sanctuary. But while I'm alive, and while I have breath, and since I understand my God is with me right now, I might not get a chance five minutes from now. I might not get a chance two minutes from now. So I think I'll praise him right now. Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Palm, every day is Palm Sunday. Every day he ought to be praised. Every day is Palm Sunday. You ought to give him praise every day. When you open your eyes in the morning, give him praise. When you put your first food in your mouth, give him praise. If you got the activity of your limbs, give him praise. Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, fulfills God's promise. He came to conquer death, hell, and the grave. He came to give life and that more abundantly. He came to seek and save that which was lost. And when his job was done and his purpose fulfilled, God gave him a name that's above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee on earth, under the earth, and in the heaven, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hey, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for salvation. Thank God for Palm Sunday.
like Jesus, can't nobody do me like the Lord, can't nobody do me like Jesus, he's not. Slow it down a little bit, can't nobody, nobody do me like, like Jesus, can't nobody do me like the Lord, can't nobody do me like Jesus, he's my friend. He picked me up, he picked me up and he told me to run on him. Pick me up, Benny. Told me to run on. Pick me up, Benny. Told me to run on. He's my friend. Can't nobody, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Boy, Tommy, pick me up. He pick me up, Benny. Turn me around. Amen, 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 amen. We thank God for our impromptu duet. <laughs> amen, amen. If there's anybody here this morning who have never received the salvation that God offers through faith in Jesus Christ, we want to give you opportunity to do that while you are here in the sanctuary. The Bible says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. What is it that we should believe? That he is the son of God, that he died on a cross for our sins, was buried, and on the third day, God raised him from the dead. That's why the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. It's a matter of faith. Believe and receive. Let me help you with a prayer. If you just bow right now, and if it's so that you will receive the salvation from God, let me lead you in this prayer just to, to ask and receive. In your own spirit, in your own way, say something like this. God, our Father, we thank you for this day. I thank you, Father, for awakening my spirit. Thank you, Father, for making my heart sensitive to your presence today. I would like for you to come into my heart. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he died for my sins. I believe that you raised him from the dead. And even though I don't understand it all, because you are moving in me today, please send your salvation. Fill me with your spirit. Make me your child. Lead my thoughts, my understanding. Help me to understand my next move. Thank you for my transformation. Thank you for salvation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, if you're here and you receive Christ for the first time, be sensitive to the Spirit. Listen to his voice in your life, amen. Find a church that's teaching the Word of God. Find people to fellowship with. Amen. And if you choose union, we'll be happy to have you. And there are ways you can do that. You can see me after the service and we'll take care of that. Today is Palm Sunday. We have palms for you. Remember that these are not good luck charms. They are, they are simply reminders of that first Palm Sunday. So let us pray. God, our Father, we ask your blessings upon your people. And we thank you for this Palm Sunday, which reminds us of the fact that you rode into Jerusalem declaring yourself to be Messiah. We ask your blessings upon these people and upon the palms that they receive. And now may the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with your people both now and forevermore.